Hi, I'm Ray and this is Phone Arena's Q&A. Raihan Patel 111 has the following question. Hi Ray, what do you think about flexible phones? Are they useful? For right now, actually, flexible phones are not really flexible, they're just curved. You don't think that this type of phones are just useless? Well, I have to admit that I do see this first generation of curved phones as more of a gimmick rather than something useful, especially when you think about the features that Samsung has built for the Galaxy Round. LG G Flex's curved screen might make it a bit more convenient when you're holding it next to your face while having a call, but uh, this was already possible and we saw it a few years ago in the Nexus S. And most importantly, uh, these aren't flexible phones. You can't flex them in any way because all the other parts around the screen are rigid. So they are simply curved phones right now. And whether there is any significant benefit in having a curved phone, I guess everyone should decide for themselves. I personally am not going to buy such a phone anytime soon because I don't think it has anything more to offer compared to flat phones. Kinox wants to know. So the volume levels of the speaker are not that loud, so what about when you put a pair of earphones? How is the volume levels there? I need to know because I listen to music a lot. Thanks. And I'm not sure uh, which phone you are referring to, probably the G2 because there was a question about it in the previous episode of the Q&A and assuming this is the case, I would say that there is plenty of power to the G2's earphones, but then again, I can't really think of a phone uh, that doesn't have enough power when you're listening to music with earphones. But uh, that said, have in mind that you really shouldn't listen to very loud uh, loudness settings with earphones because this can really damage your hearing. Skyflyer has a rather interesting question. Hey Ray. This subject has been bothering me for quite a while. As you know, Android 4.4 is rumored to have a feature that will allow it to run on lower-end devices and that Google will be making it available for legacy devices. My question is, is this going to really happen? Since OEMs are responsible for their upgrades and many smartphones are buried and stuck in old versions of Android and it will be their interest to update such phones. Is Google going to deal with manufacturers to achieve this? Now we still don't know exactly what Android 4.4 is going to bring to the table as far as low-end phones go and how it's all going to work, but if I have to make a guess here, I would say that most old devices, both phones and tablets, um, will not get an update to Android 4.4. It's not up to Google, it's up to handset manufacturers to update their phones. And most of the times uh, they aren't doing so not because of uh, hardware incompatibilities, but because they don't have or they don't want to spend enough resources that would allow them to quickly update their full lineups. So Android 4.4 may be better optimized in order to work well on low-end devices, but I don't think that we should read this as low-end devices of the past. Our viewer, whose name I will not pronounce because I may do it wrong, has posted the following question. Hi, Ray, I'm wondering between the Super AMOLED and LCD, like in the LG G2, which is better in sunny conditions and in night, where there is no light, which one is good for eyes? Thanks. Well, the thing is that we can't consider all the Super AMOLED displays as one and compare it to the G2's IPS panel. So, if we consider the Galaxy S4's display, for example, then it's much worse than the G2 when it comes to outdoor visibility and it's also a bit worse at night because it can get as dim. The Note 3, however, has a better AMOLED display, which is just as visible outdoors as the G2 and at the same time it can get really dark at night, so it will actually be better for your eyes. So we can't really generalize about uh, screen technologies and, and say that one is definitely better than the other, but when we look at specific cases we can easily see that in some cases the G2's LCD screen has the upper hand, while in others 
The AMOLED technology, in, in this case as found in the Galaxy Note 3, delivers a competitive performance and it's even better in some aspects. Finally, we have a question by our YouTube viewer Adil Mohammed. Ray, I want to ask you a question. Some say that the camera taking photo quality in S4 and Note 3 is different even if they both has 13 megapixel camera. Can you say me why and which phone's camera is better? Now, personally, I have viewed and examined pictures from both the Galaxy S4 and Note 3 and can definitely say that there is no difference between the two cameras. They have exactly the same specs, not only as far as megapixel go, but uh, also in terms of sensor size, aperture and so on. And so judging by the pictures they take, I'm pretty much certain that they are both identical. So that was all for today's episode of the Phone Arena Q&A. Be sure to post your questions below for next time or in our Q&A post at phonearena.com.